Good evening and welcome to the North Bend City Council regular session meeting Tuesday, April 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, first order of business is we are going to have Nora Rector join us in uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, well, welcome this evening. Before we begin, I'd like to just say uh, thank you for joining us and participating in local government. Thank you for those who are here in person and watching online. I like to remind everybody that we have high expectations of this council um, and the program, and uh, we expect professional decorum always from our city councilors and staff, and of course our citizens. So, um, number two on the agenda is uh, a, uh, let's see here. Bill, do you have? Can I take a look at your agenda here? Let's just make sure I don't have the wrong. I got a different one too. Packet here. Yeah, I have the one from the 13th. <laughs> no, the date's just wrong. It's the right one. Is it? Okay, I was panicking there a little bit when I saw that. Everything's correct. It was just the date. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I was looking at it too. All right. Uh, so before we begin, uh, number two on the item is approval of the agenda. <clears throat> so do I have a. Uh, uh, Madam Mayor, yes. um, staff's going to add. Under number 13, other business, uh, there will be a League of Cities proposal. Okay. There will be uh, the Homeless Task Force um, subgroup appointments. Okay. And there will be the URA budget direction. Yeah, so there will be those two items. Okay, so we have uh, some additions there, the League of Oregon Cities uh, proposal and the appointments to the uh, task force and then some information on the URA. <clears throat> with, the, with that being said, um, I, is there approval of the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Okay, I hear a first. Second. And a second, any discussion? All, there, uh, all those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, number three on the item tonight is we have some citizen recognition. So, Mr. City Administrator, would you like to lead us through that? Um, the first one will be a presentation by the North Bend Fire Department. Uh, the fire chief is here and will be leading this, but he's not going to start until I can flip fast enough on post, and I think the live video, there we go, and I turn it sideways, and um, you're always back to the camera, so if, if we're poor jokers, we have that camera and that camera, if we plan them here, so that way that and that, and then I'll go over there, How's that? and then if that's okay, the capital, you know, it's, it's wonderful producing. All right, now I click this little button. Good evening, uh, Mayor and the Council. This evening uh, we have a unique presentation. Um, we had a situation in town where we had a fire and we had a citizen, one of our great people in North Bend, stood up and went the extra mile and did something very special. So we just want to recognize him. Uh, what had happened is, what well, we'll do is I'll bring him up, we will actually read the, procl the uh, proclamation to him, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about what happened. But at this time, uh, Jeremy, if you want to come up, Jeremy Brooks. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I'll read this first, and then uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about what happened. Uh, the City of North End Fire Department recognized Jeremy Brooks for his actions on April 19, 2021. At 11:33, Mr. Brooks noticed smoke coming from an open door in the apartment next to his in the 2100 block of California Avenue. Mr. Brooks reacted quickly, broke out the glass in the fire extinguisher cabinet, and retrieved the extinguisher. Mr. Brooks then entered the apartment, saw the kitchen engulfed in fire, and sprayed the fire extinguisher where he saw the flame 
and then retreated out of the building. Uh, Mr. Brooks' actions, without a doubt, slowed the spread of the fire. North Bend Fire Department arrived as he was exiting the building and contained and extinguished the fire. Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> the fire was contained to just one apartment. Without the actions of Mr. Brooks, the fire damage would have been much worse and would have spread throughout the complex, further endangering the structure and the residents. The City of North Bend Fire Department would like to thank you for your selfless actions, your bravery, and quick thinking helped to protect our community and the people in it. Wow. Thank you. Challenge point for you. It's an urban fire department challenge point. And um, truly, what Jeremy did was fantastic. Um, we don't support people going inside of buildings with a fire extinguisher to put them out. But um, the fire department itself, we have a little larger footprint than what we've had, and we've been going and doing inspections. And we actually had this particular fire extinguisher in the case put up within the last couple of years. By doing that, that gave the opportunity for Jeremy to do his actions that he did. And uh, just everything works out good that way, and it worked out fantastic. And by him doing what he did, he undoubtedly saved a number of people's residence. So we really do appreciate it. And Jeremy, if you have anything you'd like to say? Um, not really. No? <laughs> <laughs> but the city and the fire department truly thanks you for your actions. Thank you. I'm just glad everybody actually get it out safe. I would like to. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, but thank you very much. We really yeah. do appreciate it. So if we may, if we can maybe come, you guys come in a little bit closer and we can get to Eric to Does scooch this in. Work for you here? Is this? I might go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I had long legs. I see. Yeah. How's this? All right. I'll take you in a second. You know, I'm squeezing a little bit more. Just, Just be careful with that. There. Thank you. Okay. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Should we go um, yeah, that's quite well, thinking. We have a thinking. couple more other pieces of business before we have other people recognized. Next one's your proclamation. The proclamation, okay. Proclamation first. Do we want yes. to do proclamation first, and then we have other service to recognize? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they can. You can read it there, but I'm gonna record it. I just don't want to be my dad sick. Tonight, I would also like to read a proclamation for National Youth Week, May 1st through the 7th, 2021. Whereas the Elks Lodge of the State of Oregon will observe May 1st through May 7th as Elks National Youth Week in tribute to our junior citizens, honoring them for their achievements and contributions to the life of the community, state, and nation. Whereas it's our responsibility to guide inspire and encourage our youth to go forth to serve America, our privilege to manifest a lively interest in all their activities and ambitions and help prepare them for the duties and opportunities of citizenship, which is the objective of the Elks, Elks National Youth Week. Now, therefore, I, Jessica Inglekey, the mayor of North Bend, um, here do by declare and proclaim the first week in May as Elks National Youth Week. And I call upon all citizens and all departments of the state and local governments to cooperate in observance that we may attain these worthy objectives. All right. 
Thank you. Um, and was there any further uh, comments or discussion on that? And we will move on to number three um, on the agenda, and that is employee rec recognition for Brian Owen, 35 years of service, uh, Luke Rector, 15 years of service, um, and Kelly. Kaylee. Or Kelly on. Andrade. Andrade. 15 years of service, and Kaylee M M M M M Monroe, 15 years of service. Five years. Sorry, five years of service. So Wait, tonight, <laughs> knocking it out of the park here. Uh, <laughs> all right, so Mr. City Administrator, we have some um, plaques and information for you to yes. go over. We'll start with uh, Kaylee at 15 years. 15 years, it feels like 15, We're right? We're going to have to five years years. all of that, but uh, if the council wants to uh, uh, come and get a great photo of Kaylee, our city recorder, and so where would you like to be? You know, there's some stuff that comes with us. Mm -hmm. Really, one of the more important things, don't you? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Um, so we'll start with uh, Kaylee. Kaylee is our uh, city recorder. She had um, uh, was uh, promoted. Uh, she was our uh, aquatic director. Um, she quasi still is the secret person, the secret sauce that still keeps that pool um, moving and forging ahead despite the fact that it has no water and she's been all the technical assistance on the grant. Um, but she's um, also um, you know, serving as not only the city recorder but also uh, human resources. So when um, our, uh, we had the change in the finance director, um, Kaylee stepped up and so she uh, uh, now serves that dual role and she's actually in dual certification programs so she becomes a certified uh, municipal clerk and also a certified uh, uh, HR uh, professional so it's with that that um, I'm proud to be able to give you the certificate and um, don't spend this all in one place um, <laughs> but do spend it North Bend yeah we'll do all right so we'll Ten more years, <laughs> Kelly. Kelly's not here. Not here. And I apologize for mispronouncing her last name. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, it says um, uh, in recognition uh, for 15 years of outstanding service um, for handling each emergency with uncompromised confidence and integrity, for being the steady voice in a storm, for being for using courage and compassion, and for providing such a meaningful service to the citizens of the city of North Bend. Always remember that you make a difference and signed by the chief. Do you want to say anything? Um, I know we just finished out with um, an important week. Um, and, um, you know, if this doesn't all make it to her, well, I'm sure I'll understand. <laughs> well, I, I mean, the fact that Kelly isn't here tonight, I think, is a testament to who she is. Um, serves with humility, uh, pushes us uh, as, as bosses. Uh, and pushes us as law enforcement officers. Which way am I facing? Why did you in the middle of the camera? Isn't that, isn't that my back to every camera? <laughs> <laughs> well, you want me to move this way. Right. Okay. So on behalf of Kelly, who uh, er earnestly asked that she not have to be here uh, to <laughs> accept this, I'll accept it on her behalf and, and with her thanks. Well, I would say let's take a picture with a thumbs up exactly. and, and we'll and we'll email it or, yeah, exactly. text it to her. All right, ready? All right, one, two, three. Thumbs up. What? Huh? Okay. Excellent. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. seen this man before, you've called 
911, you've probably have seen him in person. Um, you've seen him deliver babies. He's been on the front page of the newspaper. And here he is live in North Bend. So um, uh, it says, presented to Luke Recker in recognition of 15 years of outstanding dedication and service to the city of North Bend, the North Bend Fire and Rescue Team, and the community they serve. And if we um, had a North Bend calendar, he would probably be the calendar person of the year um, <laughs> because anyone that delivers a baby deserves that. And with that, I'll let the chief come up and um, say some gracious words for Luke Rector. Come on up, you bring your family up. All right. Uh, come on, Nora. Like too shy. To come up. Too shy? No way. <laughs> so we'll present this to Luke and. Did you not shake hands about that? No, no, no such one. Um, Luke has always stepped up in every situation that comes up. Um, recently, we've uh, been applying for some grants, and Luke says, hey, let me take a shot at that. And he's applied for, and just last week, this week, was it? Yeah, this, this week. Oh, well, yeah. Put in a $22,000 grant to Firehouse Sub for a radio system. And he's worked a lot on that, and uh, he's put in a couple of other grants as well. Hopefully we can say they weren't as successful as this one here is, because we hope this one goes through. Um, a situation of what you're going to get with Luke. I got a text oh, about two weeks ago. Um, somebody just texted me that I knew and said, hey, your guys were just over here on a call, and whoever was driving the fire engine took the extra time to slow down, make eye contact, and wave at my son who was standing out on the side of the street. And so... I actually passed that along to Luke, and his comment back to me was, well, that's just what we do if we make the kids happy. And it, it was a fantastic job, just that extra little bit. He, just, he was coming back from a, a very serious medical emergency, but he took the time when he saw a little boy standing on the street looking at the fire truck to try to make his day a little bit more. And that's an example of what our fire department is. And any person in our fire department, I'm sure, would have the same result, because that's we, you have the best department that you can have and each person cares about our community. Luke just happened to get pointed out. So we do appreciate everything Luke does and has been doing for the last 15 years. Hopefully the next 15 will be even better than the first 15. Thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Come on, speech, speech. <laughs> we'll give you a chance to talk to him. All right. And are you sure you don't want to come up here? Great opportunity, you know. Does Nora want to? You want to get in the picture, Nora? Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yep. All right. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. I'll make room for you. Okay. Excellent. All right. Ready? One, two, three. We'll say cheese. I don't know what I just did. Give me a second. Because it just said something about capturing your faces. So give me a second. <laughs> Well, he's famous, so you know, it's Google recognition. There we go. He was in the front page of the Register Garden this week. Oh! That's a big one. All right, here we go. One, two, three. I didn't get my ice cream either. <laughs> you, you were gone that day, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, there's ice cream up in the fridge with root beer. Go make yourself a float. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Not too much, just that it, like uh, Chief Kaplan was saying, it certainly doesn't feel like it's been 15 years. I just always got to remind myself, like, it doesn't feel like I've been here that long. And, it, mm. and I certainly don't think you've got 15 years of outstanding dedication, maybe 10 or 12. But <laughs> <I did. laughs> but, yeah. Um, did you start here? <laughs> yeah. You did? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I started as a sleeper, actually, in the program with the college and then worked my way up. Got Very hired good. On, so. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, thank you very much. I love it. You know, I, I don't think, uh, Mr. Miller, you, you don't know this, but uh, November of 2015, uh, Luke and I uh, were in a commercial together for my commercial debut for not burning our house down because of deep frying a turkey. And we still play that every, almost every year. And I still get teased by <laughs> especially by my two older brothers. And it seems like like people in Eugene see it. You, you got yep. one. It's, it's good. So it's like it on YouTube or something? It is. It's on. It's in the Kusel the Wellness uh, YouTube channel. You can find it. So you can play it for everybody. So that 
Luke gets his recognition as the uh, fire guy from the turkey commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, you know, to Brian and to Luke and to Kelly and to Kaylee for your years of service. We love everything that you do for our community and we appreciate you and we know that your work doesn't necessarily end here um, and it's everything else that you do in the community. So thank you and congratulations and a special thanks also to Nora and all of all all of your families because I know that they sacrifice in the work that you do. Good night. Good night. All right. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and move on to number four on the uh, agenda, and that is our consent calendar. Uh, we have information in our packet, um, page three. Mr. City Administrator, was there any additional comments or anything that you wanted to make about that? Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, as uh, always, this is a consent calendar. Uh, everything on the consent calendar was discussed during the work session that was held on Monday. Um, consent calendars are uh, sort of course of business housekeeping items. So you have on there the minutes from the April 6, 2021 meeting, the quarterly financial report, your award of contract for library security services, and your adoption of the updated fiscal year 21-22 budget calendar. So there was uh, uh, no objection to the consent calendar, so it would require a motion and adoption of the council. It's the April, April 13th minutes, I believe. Not the 26th. I move that we um, approve the consent con calendar as presented. Second. Okay. I hear a first and a second. Was there any discussion? All there. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Number five on the agenda tonight is public comment. Kaylee, do we have anybody online or? Come in and zoom. Um, I would like to take a moment um, and say that we do appreciate those who are participating in public comment this evening. That public comment period is an essential part of local government meetings. Each person who speaks has three minutes. Our governing body does take the input into consideration. However, in order to comply with Oregon open meeting laws, this isn't a time for dialogue, but rather a time for us to listen to you. Our city administrator and recorder are taking notes of any action needed. So we have, is it one person on, one person for public comment? Ms. Natalie Ranker. Hi, this is Natalie. Can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm Natalie Ranker, 414 Simpson Avenue, North Bend. Um, I was at the, uh, the what do we say, the, the planning meeting last night, and uh, I very much was appreciative of all of the work that is going into the disc golf course, both on both sides. Um, I, I believe, there's, I'm sure there's, there's many things to be discussed between now and the end of September, but one thing that I think is important to note, um, it seemed to be stated such, such as with cameras set up um, and there were very few people seen walking along the paths, um, there were two people seen at the picnic tables, et cetera. Um, it, it's open certainly for more discussion, but I think for that to be a valid basis for, um, for deciding how many people utilize the park, that was done between January and March, I believe, when we had horrible weather and lots of rain. I think studies like that should be done in the um in the i'm sorry for this phone call in 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 this in the good weather anyway that's all i have to say thank you very much all right thank you and i believe there's no further public comment okay that takes us to number six on the agenda which is ordinance 2048 it's a comprehensive plan and tax amendment for the transportation system plan. Uh, we have on page 30 of our packet the information. We discussed this um, at our last city council meeting. There is a staff recommendation to adopt the findings and final decision of the city of North Bend Council in the matter of case number AMD 1-21 as presented and pass the ordinance number 2048. What is the will of the council? I'd like the uh, the reading ordinance 
2048 to be by title only the first reading okay first reading by title only i hear a first is there a second second any discussion Although um madam mayor i think we already did the first reading at the last first reading at the last meeting okay. um so we only need to do the second reading today and that um so I don't know if you want to amend your motion. I, I will amend my motion to read the to have the second reading of ordinance number two zero four eight by title only. Okay. I would also like to second that motion. I hear a first and a second for the second reading of the ordinance to be by title only. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number twenty forty eight. An ordinance amending the city of North Bend comprehensive plan to update the transportation system plan TSP and amending the text of North Bend city code title 10, 17 and 18 to update transportation related land use development standards to comply with the updated TSP. Okay, so since that was the second reading, then we would um, consider Leave at this point a motion to adopt the ordinance. I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance. Okay. I'll second. I hear a first and a second. And then um, on the ordinance, I believe, Mrs. Stebbins, we have a roll call vote, correct? Yes. Is you have to open it up for discussion. Yeah, isn't there there's a discussion period? Is there uh is there any so we had a a first and a second. Is there to adopt the ordinance. Um, is there any further discussion? Um, I would just comment that there has never been a requirement to have a motion to go into deliberations. Um, according to two former counselors, Howard Graham and Mike Orbelly, whenever an ordinance was under con discussion and the public hearing had been concluded, there's never been a requirement to have a vote to go into deliberations and I'll, I'll leave it at that. And it's not in either the city charter or the council rules. And that's not, and we are not asking for a vote to go into the deliberations right now. We are at this point, we are um, okay. moving I have no forward, further comment. forward with adopting the ordinance. And we had our first, we had our second. Um, besides Councilor Nordoff, is there any other discussion? No. So then at this point, it would be the roll call vote. Councilor, right. yeah. Uh, Councilor um, Richardson, how do you stand on the ordinance? For the ordinance. Councilor Gleason, how do you stand on the ordinance? For the ordinance. Councilor Nordoff, how do you stand on the ordinance? Against the ordinance. And Councilor Garboden, how do you stand on the ordinance? For the ordinance. And I too am for the ordinance and with the majority then the or ordinance carries and passes and is adopted okay so that was number six on the agenda number seven is resolution 3303 community development block grant approval of the draft uh, subgrant agreement with the oregon coast community action and we have page 74 some information in your packet on that mr, C mr. city administrator was there anything further uh, you wanted to comment on this and then this is a uh, straightforward uh, resolution. This is an agreement uh, uh, between the city and ORCA uh, to be the grant administrator should the city be awarded the community development block grant uh, that would provide rental assistance uh, for individuals in Coos County. Okay. And the staff recommendation is to approve resolution 3303, uh, which approves that draft sub guarantee agreement with the, um, with the Oregon Coast Community Action. So what is the will of the council? I move we approve resolution 3303, which approves the draft sub grantee agreement with Oregon Coast Community Action. Okay. A second. I hear a first and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of um, passing resolution 3303 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Number eight is the award of the Virginia and Colorado Avenue Striping and Pavement Rehabilitation Project. Our Public Works Director, Ralph Dunham, gave us some information on that last night. It's on page 97 of your packet. 
Was there any further comments or questions from our public works director or the city administrator on this one? Now this is a staff recommendation to go ahead and award the Virginia Colorado striping and pavement rehab to uh, Lusky Foot for contingent on pond, no valid bid protest within seven days of any council action as required by law. Okay. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the award of the Virginia Avenue and Colorado Avenue striping and pavement rehabilitation project to the um, Lasky Clifton Incorporated. All right, I hear a first. Second. And a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of awarding of the Virginia and Colorado um, striping as in Councilor Nordoff's motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Number nine is the adoption of the volunteer management program. From, um, and our city administrator has put together some information that we looked at and discussed on page 99 of our packet. <clears throat> Madam Mayor and Council, um, at uh, two separate meetings, uh, you were provided volunteer management programs. This is a uh, work product uh, that was done in cooperation with our department heads and the cities and shore, which is CIS. Uh, the volunteer management program is necessary in order to provide coverage for volunteers uh, that are um, uh, spending valuable resources and time on city property doing great work for the city. Um, without this um, management program, uh, if uh, uh, they would have no liability uh, coverage, workman's comp coverage, etc. So this is uh, important to uh, uh, protect our volunteers. Well, I want to say I appreciate you putting this together. I believe we had several people in the office, including Kaylee, making sure that we got all the information. And this is um, good work that's done, again, to protect the citizens. Is there, um, do we have a motion? I move uh, we adopt the volunteer management program. A second. I hear a first and a second. Was there any further discussion? Nice job. <laughs> a lot of work. A lot of, yeah. All those in favor of adopting the volunteer management program say aye. Uh, All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, we have number 10 on the agenda, which is our city administrator's report. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, <clears throat> uh, a, a couple uh, things from the city administrator's report. This report is uh, posted on the internet and social media. It's also been uh, emailed to uh, staff and the council. A couple highlights, um, I would say that um, uh, staff has been following through with uh, some of the council goals and directives. Uh, I, I certainly want to commend uh, the uh, staff and uh, Congressman DeFazio um, and also um, our public works director and his team uh, who has aggressively worked uh, with the congressman's office on uh, the American Recovery Act. Um, they uh, have an option, opportunity to put uh, 10 total projects um, and move them forward for potential funding. Uh, we got a call Monday that said that North Bend uh, would have one of those slots um, and we quickly um, addressed some of those concerns. So the project that we've aggressively gone after is the uh, uh, Pony Slough uh, Road uh, slash school access uh, collector. Um, uh, it would take us approximately four to five years with current funding to actually pave that entire project. Um, and uh, so it uh, uh, was a request for up to and including $860,130. Uh, uh, and so we'll continue uh, to work through, but uh, certainly um, if you have uh, communication with congressmen uh, or the public, um, certainly thank him. Uh, we can uh, he's been a friend to uh, North Bend on this project. Um, also on Thursday, uh, the, um, uh, the, our city planner, also in uh, uh, Ralph's department, together with our uh, uh, park superintendent and myself, we're on a call with the uh, Rare AmeriCorps grant uh, um, program. Uh, I will tell you that um, uh, we have made the first cut um, uh, moving forward. And so uh, they've already had round one of elimination of cities um, and we're still in the um, uh, pipeline uh, for potentially an 11 month um, uh, resource that will help and work with us on a uh, parks 
uh, master plan. And so we'll continue to pursue that. Um, we made um, our, our case, answered all their questions, um, and are optimistic as we move forward. Also, um, I've been uh, attending a lot of American uh, Rescue Plan Act uh, meetings with the National League of Cities. Uh, we're still awaiting direction. Uh, there's the stimulus money coming to the city. Um, we have to um, incorporate it and spend it um, uh, by 2024. Um, but we don't know yet how we can spend it. Um, it is, um, uh, they, they have very narrow criteria, but very narrow uh, criteria, and they tell us that we should expect um, clarification and direction um, sometime by May 10th, um, and then within 30 days, as long as 120, but most likely within 30 days, um, we make the disbursement of that um, and we have to hold it in abatement until we can adhere to the requirements. Um, also, uh, the finance director and myself have been following up with uh, USDA as well as um, the uh, fire and police department. Um, we have um, uh, those grants that you all had authorized us to submit. Um, uh, the fire was um, uh, the uh, uh, air apparatus equipment. The police department was the police cars. Um, they went uh, over the financials um, uh, on Friday. Uh, we are told that we should hear um, fairly soon on the status of those grants. Um, so uh, we're optimistic for that. And then uh, uh, we're getting to the end of the month and um, uh, the grant that uh, you also authorized that we go seek after um, with the uh, uh, for the trail program, uh, we should have notification of that $100,000 grant, uh, hopefully by the uh, end of the month. I say all this because um, there's been a lot of hard work by the departments, the department heads, and uh, we believe it's starting to pay off. Uh, this is a city that uh, has to aggressively go after grants um, in order to um, further a lot of the council goals and the missions. Um, so um, kudos to the department heads. Um, the rest of the uh, um, projects and uh, report is online and in your email. So thank you. Thank you for that comprehensive report. And I do always like to remind the citizens that that information is out there. And as David mentioned on social media, share it and for that information because the citizens have continued to ask us for more details. And this is a perfect way to find out what's going on in each department. So we thank you and we thank you for everybody's hard work um, at the city. Okay, so, um, and for committee reports, I know um, Councillor Gleason probably has something to say for the, did you have a committee report for the Parks Department? Oh man, if you missed, if you missed it last night. Honestly, I think that uh, committees are a way for the citizens to be involved in city government to begin with. And some of us, that's how we even got started with city government is being involved in those committees. And I think last night was kind of the epitome of, of what that means to everybody work together in the same room to try to achieve the same goal, or maybe not necessarily the same goal as it pertains to disc golf, but like the betterment of our city and, and in this case, the parks, right? So it was nice to have the committee here to meet with the city council so that we all were on the same page as to kind of like what we need to do to move this project forward. I know that there's a lot of people that have been working a long time on this, this golf, uh, have a lot of opinions around it. And we got to hear some of that last night. We got to kind of feel like maybe we're in a place that we can move forward in one way or the other, that there's going to be some resolution to this at some point. We've set a date for uh, ending the trial period, the end of September. Uh, we had a really good meeting out at the uh, Ferry Road three weeks ago or two weeks ago um, with was Jason, is it Niemer? Is that Niemer. Uh, who is a, um, for those that weren't watching last night, who does disc golf course design. And I think that it was really nice to have his feedback on, on what he sees and what he thinks and, and what he uh, experienced while he was out there. So I think that we're in a good place that maybe the parks committee can finally put the disc golf course to bed soon, by the end of this year, and, and get on to other projects. So um, it was nice that, to, to, to see that uh, work between the, the committee and the council and it's i think we're, we're in a good spot i agree okay 
And I know Pat Gall had mentioned that he had a committee report, and I don't know if – was that for the fire committee, Chief Brown? No? Okay. And he's not here. So was there any other committee reports? Okay. So that takes us to council comments. So, Councilor Richardson. Just following kind of what Eric was saying, I think yesterday's meeting was long, to say the least, but we got a lot accomplished at the work session yesterday. And when we're working towards things, I agree with your comment last night was that things take time. And we spent a lot of time on a lot of different subjects yesterday during the work session, and I really feel that we're making headway and we're gaining ground on a lot of different things. The police chief had a nice presentation for what the future of the police department is going to possibly look like. I think that that was important. We talked a lot about the block grant. There's just a lot of things happening right now that are super important. And we talked about the – and this is coming up – that Coos Bay is doing the homeless task group, and there's going to be some people from this council working on that also. And I just think that we're going in the right direction. I really do, on a lot of different subjects. That's really all I have. Okay. Councilor Nordoff? It was time well spent. I agree with that. I also want to share that I went to the – I signed up to give two minutes' worth, and I was on hold for an hour and 40 minutes in front of the legislative committee, the Joint Ways and Means Committee. And I did get a call the very next day from the co-chair of the committee, and she pointed me in a couple of directions. She said that the Oregon Community Foundation is a real good resource for watching and jumping on it when they announce grant applications are open for swimming pools. She said that in her district, which is like Scappoose, St. Helens, that area, that she knows of about a half a dozen pools that are – the equipment's becoming obsolete. And so she was really pretty dialed in on swimming pools. And, yes, that's specifically what I spoke to. And she also said that our two – from Region 4 – this was specifically for Region 4 – that our region's senator and representative also have funds available and to make contact with them. So I'll follow up on that. I'm not quite sure how – if I should brief somebody on staff to watch for the OCF grant announcement or – but we can discuss that at a later time. Councilor Garboden out there in Zoom land, any comments tonight? Nope, not for me. All right. Thank you. And Councilor Gleason. Yeah, I think the last two – last night's marathon meeting, which was great. And tonight, I think it's great to see the citizen recognition, that the community is involved, even in something like that, that can be a major shift in momentum, especially in a fire. Last night, Chief's breakdown of the police services, like we're at a place – and I think Bill's right – we're at a place where we're really trying to do some really good things. We're really trying to make some really big waves. I also have to say congratulations to all the employees that were recognized tonight. I'm bummed that we didn't get to see Brian. Luke, again, like I said, we've been in that commercial together. He's always been just someone that's so easy to communicate with as a community member, and you're lucky to have him. I know of Kelly's work from some time I spent doing security at the casino, and she's a hard worker. But I've known Kaylee – we grew up down the street from each other in this small town. So I'm really – I know when she first got hired, she said, I found my dream job. And it's so cool to see that she's still here doing her thing. And all of the people that put time into this city that make the things like the volunteer management program happen and move things forward like we've been trying to move forward. We have to do this as a community, and that's going to include the citizens, like with the pool. We have to decide what's important to us and what we want to pay for as a city and what we want to do as a city. 
and we really want to work with you as citizens to try to move these things forward. And I think we've really shown that in the last few months, and I'm, I'm really happy that we're doing that. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. It was a marathon meeting last night. I think that it, we hit the four-hour mark, yeah. and um, but I, I, I'm, it was very productive, and we are getting things done. And so that says something a lot about this council. I don't think any of you decided to run and, and be a part of this just so that you can come and be part of ceremonial things. That's fantastic, <laughs> and I love it, but that's not where the real work happens. So I do want to remind the public that four-hour meeting is available for you to watch. And I, ha I did talk to somebody who watched the whole thing, and they said they were not bored, that it was very informative. <laughs> so it is out there on the Internet right now, and you can, you can really understand what's happening, where we're going with things, hear the police chief's presentation, find out what's going on with the library, understand every, each side of disc golf. Please, you know, sh again, share that information. So this is good. This is good information. Before I ran um, for city council, I didn't quite understand how it all worked. I would pop in to a meeting every once in a while and thought, geez, they just do that in 30 minutes and then it's over. Mm -hmm. And didn't really understand that that work session is really where you can do a deep dive and figure out things and that the actual council meeting tonight is just our business meeting where we're doing the formal adoptions and we are making sure that we um, have the ceremonial pieces and all that. But uh, watch those work sessions and you can really dig in. I haven't had a chance to really get to know um, Brian that well, but I know he works really hard for the city and puts his heart into everything that he does. Um, and I haven't got a chance to really know Kelly, but I know how highly that the chief speaks of her and just that she's a dedicated employee. Um, Kaylee, I have asked her, I knew her a little bit from the pool and then saw her transition into the city recorder um, position and she's very helpful to me about understanding some of the protocols and some of the information. And I've always asked her, like, how do you know all this stuff? This is a, that's a big transition to make um, into the world of HR and city recorder. And she says, I read a lot. So she's always behind the scenes, making sure that we have all the information that we need um, and all the documents and reading, 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 because it is a lot of detailed information that we are trying to do correctly and making sure that we're staying in with like all the legalities and everything. So, and Luke, you know, I've, I've been able to work with him on some other projects in town, um, including putting on a marathon and he is a hard worker and probably the nicest guy that I've ever met. I mean, you, you could not find anybody to say a bad thing about him. So like, so, so proud to have these employees here at the city. Um, that's all I have for tonight for my comments. And um, we will move into other business because I did believe at the top of the meeting we said there are three, two to three other items. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two items. The first one will be the League of Cities proposal that was uh, discussed at the work session. Uh, you were uh, provided a copy of the April 22nd, 2021 League of Cities proposal. Uh, the engagement is to uh, work through your council rules and uh, implement best practices and then present a final draft of the rules uh, back to the city council um, which is when your work takes over so uh, if there's uh, no objection um, the city administrator will move forward uh, with that engagement uh, the cost is roughly about twenty four hundred dollars um, so i just need a uh, motion uh, for the council to move forward because they are your council rules um, but I'll go ahead and get the engagement moving uh, provide them the rules um, that uh, you all have and um, uh, they'll work through them and then provide a document back to the council okay so I'll entertain a motion to move forward and would you also like us to include the dollar amount at this time yeah. or just just to move forward in the work with the council rules I move we work with the League of Oregon Cities on updating the City of North Bend's rules for the City Council. Okay, I hear a first. Second. And a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of Eric Gleason's motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and then we have the uh, task force appointments, correct? Yes, um, last night uh, there was a discussion about the uh, uh, homeless task force uh, that I serve on um, at the uh, pleasure of the council with uh, Coos Bay. Uh, they have asked for a subgroup um, of elected officials between Coos Bay and uh, North Bend. Um, 
there was a uh, recommendation that uh, the mayor and the council president serve on that. Uh, there was one council member who has uh, since withdrawn. So, um, uh, Madam Mayor, you would present to the council um, uh, having yourself and Council President Richardson serving on that homeless task force uh, subgroup. I'll communicate that information if approved to uh, Coos Bay, who then will be in further communication uh, with you on uh, future meetings. Okay, so I would like to make that recommendation that Council President Bill Richardson and I um, serve on that task force. And then are we voting on that recommendation or adopting it? Uh, you actually would vote on the um, on the appointments. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion for the appointments. So I move that we appoint the uh, mayor and the council president to the homeless task force. Second. I hear a first and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of those appointments say aye. 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 All any opposed? Motion carries. Just want to make sure Larry Garboden wasn't trying to chime in there and say he wanted to join us. No, I'm fighting with the computer. Okay, you're welcome to join us though. Okay, so we took care of the appointments and then there was some URA business or... So you adjourn this meeting and then you would uh, start your next meeting. Okay, Mayor. all right. So I will go ahead and adjourn or uh, take us out of the regular work session and open our URA. Regular council or, or, sorry. Regular council meeting. Our North End Urban Renewal Agency regular council meeting, correct? Uh, this would be your North Bend Urban Renewal Agency meeting. Sorry, our North Bend Urban Renewal Agency meeting for Tuesday, um, April 27th. And we will officially call this to order. The first item of business on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. I hear a first and a second of the approval of the agenda. Madam Chair. Yep. Um, under other business, we need to add the URA budget directive. Okay. And that so, will be under number six. Um, so we will go ahead and add those additional items and then um, to the agenda, then I would accept a motion to approve the agenda for tonight. So there's already a motion on the floor and it's been seconded, right? Or you, do you have to do? Are you do you have to take that one back because you added you the new business? Amend the agenda or amend the motion? Yeah, amend the motion. I think is what you need to do. We'll make a motion to. Or amend your motion. Amend my motion. <laughs> I'm gonna second all of those. Uh, Councilor Richardson amended his motion <laughs> to approve the agenda. <laughs> Councilor Gleason seconded. This only happens when Bill makes a motion. Is like there? <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the agenda with the additional additions in other business say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Is there any public comment tonight for our Urban Renewal Agency public comment section? No public comment. Number four is the URA resolution uh, 58 request of qualifications, North Bend Public Library, Director of Library Services, page two of your urban renewal packet. Madam Chair, in your packet, uh, you have a request um, for resolution 58. Um, this is simply a request for qualifications. Uh, you're approving the RFQ to uh, be put on the street. Uh, we'll go administratively and seek responses. Uh, go ahead and then rank and rate them and then come back to the council with an uh, recommendation for approval and award. Um, so any motion would be to approve resolution 58 for the request for qualifications for the library. Okay, I'll entertain a motion um, for resolution 58. I move we uh, approve URA resolution 58 request for proposals for North Bend Library renovations. I hear a first. Second. And a second. Is there any further discussions? All those in favor of approving Councilor Gleason's motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Number five on the agenda is the South Coast Development Council uh, membership. We had a discussion about this last night. There's information on your packet of 14. Mr. City Administrator, did you want to? Yeah, the S C 
NCDC uh, is a strategic partner in helping North Bend see cooperatively to grow jobs and industry. Uh, so uh, there's budgeted funds, so it's a recommendation for this URA uh, to initially participate at the level of $10,000. Okay. And, and again, that is, um, so the recommendation is to participate at $10,000 with using funds from the URA. Is there a first? I'll make a motion that we that we uh, join SEDC for ten thousand dollars. Okay. Do I hear, I hear a first and a second. Is there any further discussion? Um, I am concerned about setting <clears throat> setting the precedent for taking SCDC funds from the urban renewal pot. I I think it's a bad precedent, and it's it's it, it is not just urban renewal that this uh, membership will be concerned with. So. For clarification, we have to reapply every year, right? Uh, absolutely, and this is absolutely within the confines of the URA and also meets the URA's adopted plan. So just because we use URA funds this time wouldn't necessarily mean we would use URA funds next time depending on what we were, we could have that discussion in a year, right? That's correct. So we wouldn't necessarily set a precedent because we'd have to have a discussion about it next year. It's not a precedent in the sense that every single year you have to adopt your right. budget. So how you spend those is up to uh, the board. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have on the floor a first and a second. We've had some discussion. All those in favor of um, using the 10 or uh, let's see how do I say this all those in favor of um, the using the URA funds for coming into the SBDC support um, at 10,000 say aye. aye aye any opposed nay the motion carries okay all right and we had some other business Madam Chair, um, uh, you have uh, before you um, a compilation of uh, some of the discussion that we had and then some further refinements that uh, we made with the uh, finance director today. Uh, this is a, uh, for the most part, a newly constituted uh, URA board with a new URA executive director and that um, it would behoove the URA to uh, take a very hard look at its URA plan and potentially uh, do some updates. Uh, because of Oregon uh, law, um, as I mentioned during the uh, uh, work session discussion of the URA yesterday, that you don't want to uh, basically uh, back yourself into a corner uh, where you then cannot move forward on some of the initiatives that the URA has already authorized. So in this, uh, for the proposed budget, this is not adopting the budget, it's simply giving the staff the direction necessary to move forward with entering this into the budget and then starting the process of updating the plan and bringing it back before you. So there will be subsequent moves. This doesn't um, authorize any spending. It simply moves the buckets so that staff has a direction because we have to move forward with the proposed budget through the budget committees, um, publish the budget, et cetera, before it gets back to the URA. So in this, you'll see that the library expansion in fiscal year 21 was 500,000. Um, we are in fiscal year 22, uh, recommending that that remains at that same funding level. You'll notice that uh, community development in fiscal 21 was 650,000. Um, we are recommending that that's consolidated to a million dollars. Again, as projects come up, 
uh, it gives you the option in your plan to actually commit it instead of have line items that may or may not actually ever move forward. You have the visitor center uh, where it was 800,000. Uh, it was a visitor center slash Simpson Park. And as you uh, may recall in the plan, that called for the decel lane and, and the new restrooms and all of these other things. When in fact, in your tourism tax money, there's a half a million dollars towards that initiative as well. So what we've done is we've reduced that 800,000 down to 300,000. So you can actually acquire the property and then actually have a facility or building. So it's working the two in tandem. So it gives you some breathing room. The facade um, improvement grant, um, we balanced out, um, basically uh, we, we rounded out some of the other numbers. Uh, the facade improvement uh, for businesses was at 75,000. We're recommending that you allocate it at 188,900. Um, this way by uh, July 1st, we anticipate having a proposal for the new facade grant. And so as applications come in, this body still has to approve each applicant which means it just simply gives you a larger pot of money moving forward. This is not designed to spend it all in one year. I assure you, um, that's not that uh, behoove. But it allows you um, to continue to add that bucket and do facade grants in um, uh, your uh, URA uh, district. Uh, last but not least, you have property acquisition. Um, there's actually some uh, legislation that's attached to that that was previous. Um, so that figure um, is at $811,100. So for fiscal uh, 21, you're looking at um, uh, $2,375,000. Um, and then with the additional inflow that comes in each year, um, we're estimating that that fiscal year 22 budget will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,800,000. So we're simply um, asking that the uh, URA board um, uh, see fit to um, uh, move to allow uh, staff to move forward with this as a proposed budget and then start uh, the process accordingly. Okay. We have a question from Councillor Nordoff. Yes, uh, I'm you, wondering. Um, you, hold on for one second. You can't just open. So this. You so actually have to have a motion to oh, start your process. Okay. So we have so we have before us the information. And at this point, then you are looking for, uh, are we having, are we going to, I'm not quite sure then if I understand. So what you, it, usually you say, what's the will of the council? Cause you've heard from the staff and the recommendations so at this point, if you don't get a will of the council, then it sort of dies and we don't have anything to move forward on. Okay. So we have some information before us and I will ask the council, what is the will of the council? Larry, you want this one? <laughs> what? I said, do you want this one? Uh, Does he have this this, uh, this document electronically? He might not have this this particular information in front of him. If I understand correctly, this is a, um, this, we are moving forward then with, this would be a discussion to move forward with the proposed budget. Um, this is authorizing staff to uh, reallocate um, the URA um, budget. So you're giving um, staff authorization to reallocate so that we can then propagate the changes into a proposed budget and then start moving it through the budget process. Okay, okay so you're not doing anything with prior year's budget. It's just uh, housekeeping so you can have your hands free to do what's administration and staff wants to do with the URA and then present it to us. Um, this, um, uh, so uh, in yesterday's meeting, we listed out all of the various buckets. And the problem with all those buckets is that it commits you and you cannot utilize or move any of those uh, items. So uh, again, what I would encourage is that you get a motion, uh, if you get a second, and then we can go into discussion and answer the questions and so we, okay, so we'll begin with, I would entertain a motion to, um, for Except staff, staff recommendation. I, I, I would entertain a motion for the staff recommendation of the reallocation of the funds. I will move that we follow the staff recommendation to allocate funds uh, for the fiscal year 2022 um, as outlined here. Okay, 
I hear a first. I'll second that. And I second. Is there, and now is there any discussion? Um, last night was pretty long and I'm not sure everything stuck. So uh, for fiscal year 2021, are these funds basically then allocated and they will be spent or so that we're not seeing for fiscal year 22 kind of a carryover from from monies that aren't haven't been used um, so the projects that you see that are listed as fiscal year 21 um, there's nothing happening with any of those um, you will notice that the little theater on the bay um, they have uh, completed theirs, so they would not move forward they have right. spent all their money Okay. Um, uh, their, uh, the library expansion, to my knowledge, hasn't spent any of theirs. Um, uh, community development hasn't. The visitor center. Um, uh, okay. So, so the so you see the anticipated um, money moving forward from fiscal year twenty one mm -hmm. to twenty two um, with the additional revenue that comes in each year. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussions? So I have it on the floor first and a second. All those in favor of Councilman Nordoff's motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Okay, was that the last item on the urban renewal agenda? And um, okay, so I will go ahead and officially adjourn the urban renewal meeting for this evening. And I have it. We're coming back into regular session because I hadn't officially adjourned that. Was there any other business in our regular session? Oh. Move to adjourn. I, yes, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Here are first from uh, Councilor Gleason. Second. Second yeah. from Councilor Nordoff. Maybe a third from Councilor Corbodin. <laughs> all, those, all those in favor of adjourning tonight's, or was there any discussion? Oh. All those in favor of adjourning tonight's meeting in less than two hours say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Nice meeting is adjourned. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification on.